Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the next episode of the Audio Codes Cloud Education series. As you remember, may remember from our series, I'm Daryl, and with me is Mike Gerps. Hey, folks. Hey, so today we are going to talk to you about a topic that's top of mind for us and is really driving a lot of conversations recently, and that is the topic of direct routing. Direct routing being from Microsoft and coupling with some hardware and software, but I'm just this guy, and I think the expert needs to talk about it. So, Mike, why don't you describe for everybody what direct routing is? Yes, direct routing. <clears throat> Certainly uh, an exciting time, first first and foremost. Um, you know, we definitely see um, a nice trend here with, with what Mike, Microsoft's doing in Teams and uh, specifically around the voice uh, aspect of that. And to your point there, Daryl, uh, direct routing really allows us to bring our own uh, trunks, if you will, into the Microsoft Teams backend. So as you may recall from you know, the past or, or even present day, I should say, it's, it's not like it doesn't exist anymore, but Skype for Business Online allows you to bring you know, your own trunks, if you will, or you have calling plans where you essentially get your DIDs from uh, from Microsoft. Uh, but in those cases where you might need to bring in those trunks uh, that already exist, whether it be you have that relationship with a telco, uh, a legacy contract, uh, or, or maybe you just can't port those numbers into calling plans because it's it's a country that doesn't exist uh, in, in the calling plan, uh, plan options. So direct routing allows us to utilize a certified SBC and connect that directly into the team's back end. Uh, and ultimately, on the other side, the SBC could be pretty much anything. That could be a new and improved SIP trunk that you know your telcos can provide. Maybe it's a, a legacy T1 uh, or an E1 for, for folks in, uh, outside of the US, uh, allowing you to connect those into teams. But even more, as you know, Daryl, just as much as I, Sometimes it doesn't happen where everybody's on Teams, or in this case, uh, or Skype for Business, and you need to have sort of a migration uh, between, uh, or sort of, uh, you know, um, a coexistence, if you will, between an existing PBX and Teams. So with that SBC integration, we can also connect into those PBXs, provide that, you know, bridge, if you will, between the different platforms, and and make everybody sort of happy, if you will. Um, the other piece, uh, Daryl, you know, this, this might be something that you've seen in the past is um, we have a lot more flexibility now with the, the SBC options. And um, I know that, uh, you know, you've seen some things in the past uh, with Skype for Business Online, but, uh, you know, it certainly gives us a lot more flexibility too. Yeah, for sure. So, um, you know, I, I was working with a customer recently that had some uh, um, PRI, some, some of their ISD and T1s. They were trying to work with their carrier to switch to SIP. They were also exploring changing phone system from A to B and also trying to figure out if this Microsoft Teams thing was right for them. And so, so uh, yeah. exactly, right? So it was like building this big octopus diagram up on the whiteboard. Um, yeah. It was a pretty interesting conversation. And I, ultimately where we landed – um, was an SBC is is good, right? That way, the SBC can be that centralized controller for all your voice and your and your your dial plan, and then you can bring whatever connectivity makes the most sense on the premises that last mile. Um, but direct routing now, um, from what you said, what you said sounds to be like again that really flexible option. But I just want to clarify something. You mentioned SBCs, and obviously, I just talked about SBCs. So, hardware SBCs. Virtual SBCs, cloud, AWS, Azure. Is, are there any limitations? What types of SBCs? And kind of a follow-up question. I know I'm asking you a lot. Um, I, I do remember, you know, Skype Online, and Skype Online had this technology called CCE. So maybe right. you can speak a little bit in like the differences between CCE and Teams, and, and maybe some of that uh, plan going forward. Yeah, if you think about CCE, um, it was it was that first generation, if you will, of uh, extending the cloud to the on-prem world, right? And what Microsoft was able to do is create CCE, basically, if you will, a stripped-down version of Skype for Business Server 
or, or previously link server. Right. Minimum, um, minimum topology, right? Min exactly. Topology. We've talked about it yeah. in the industry for a while. Exactly. And, and I, I kind of coined the term. It was basically your on-prem mediation server, right? It's yeah. extending the cloud down to your on-prem world. Um, CCE was something that customers had to host in their data centers to provide that connectivity uh, to the cloud. And then beyond that would be the SPC or gateway to connect to the ultimate, you know, destination of PSTN trunks, SIP trunks, PBX, so on and so forth. Um, now with Teams and direct routing, that piece of Microsoft infrastructure, if you will, is in the cloud. And so from a customer perspective, you're really only needing to host the SBC in your data centers or on-prem, if you will, uh, rather than anything specific to the Microsoft stack. Um, and that's a great thing for everybody because, as I mentioned earlier with the flexibility, now you can have different sites. Maybe some are small where you just need a small SBC or gateway or those large data centers where you're centralizing SIP trunks or, uh, you know, larger sets of PRIs, things like that. And you're really able to utilize the entire portfolio of SBCs, if you will, uh, based on the requirements of that particular site. Um, in addition to that, a lot of the, the trends is obviously going into the cloud, right? So teams right. sit in the cloud, Skype for Business Online in the past, or, or even, you know, I, we keep saying past, it still does exist. Um, <laughs> you know, that that's also in the cloud as well. Um, but what we've seen is also a shift from an SPC perspective. Uh, in the past, you know, you couldn't plug a T1 into software, right? You had to have right. that physical connection yeah. into a T1. But with SIP trunks, we have a lot more flexibility. Um, and it doesn't necessarily have to be a hardware SBC, which obviously we have a ton of those, you know, scaling up or down based on capacities. But now we've had that transition into, okay, let's go into the virtualized environments. So running on hype, the different hypervisors in Hyper-V, VMware, KVM, et cetera. Uh, those are things that customers can run in their data centers. Um, but now the fundamental shift is, well, everything is Teams online, uh, direct routing, everything from a Microsoft stack exists in the cloud. Can we run our SBC in Azure as well, bring that SIP trunk directly into Azure? And the answer to that is yes. Um, there are a couple different, obviously, cloud options out there, but the two specifically that exist for, for us here, at least from an audio codes perspective, is the AWS virtual SBC bits, and also now upcoming the Azure virtual SBC bits as well. So you, Daryl, as a, we'll call you the customer here today, uh, you don't need anything on-prem anymore if you really don't want to, uh, but you can still all get all those features and benefits that come along with having the SBCs connected to, to Teams. Yeah, that sounds that sounds great. You know, I, I I've been dealing in the the telco world for most of my career, and it, it's always been that um, that stumbling block or that that last thing to think about is how do I shift my voice workload to the cloud? And that's always been challenging, right? Because you know, trying to get that circuit shifted up into this mysterious place called Azure or AWS is a challenge. But you know, I can think of several customers of mine, especially among my nonprofit friends. I think I'm gonna do a really quick shout out to my nonprofit friends that already have some really great benefits from Microsoft in Azure with Azure credits and, and even with AWS. So now they can get really creative um, with a usage based SIP trunk, land that inside their cloud hosted environment, run a virtual SBC, and not have to worry about closet space and not have to worry about uh, what it's like to build out on-premise services and support. Now they can, really can lift and shift that workload um, and be strategic with their voice dollars instead of trying to do the cheapest method, which might be cell phones for everybody, or just not worry about it and hope it doesn't break, right? Yep. It's, it's, it's yeah. really a brand new world. Yeah, it, it, it's definitely interesting. It gives you a lot more options, a lot more flexibility. And one other thing that I did want to touch on, specific to direct routing that may not have existed in, in Skype Online and CCE, if you will, is more of a dynamic approach to routing. So in the past, you know, you talk about some of these nonprofits, they might have 
you know, one site, two sites, et cetera. But for some of the larger organizations that may have multiple sites and want to do least cost routing and things like that, with Teams, you can now um, route based on where you want to route the calls. So very much similar to Skype for Business Server, Link Server in the past, you have the ability to go in there and have a lot more feature functionality specific to routing so that if you have multiple sites with different SBCs, you can make those decisions based on, um, you know, what's best for the organization. Because as you know, especially in the nonprofit world and, and, and obviously other organizations as well, you want to minimize costs as much as you can, especially around the voice side and consumption and things like that. So it really gives you that nice flexibility there as well. And I just wanted to throw that last bit of, of, uh, of information, if you will, specific to the direct routing yeah. um, for everyone to, to, to know. Yeah, I think that's great. And, you know, a, a really great side effect um, um, of the location-based routing um, mm-hmm. It would also obviously be for like emergency services and thinking through what that looks like to make sure you don't lose that that really important mindset in case bad things do happen because they do from time to time, especially in today's world. Nice to know that you can definitely adjust those calls accordingly. Well, yeah. Mike, it's been a great discussion. Thank you for sharing with us about direct routing. Um, it's been Absolutely. good as, as always. I, I hope those of you that are, are, are watching this online or have learned a couple things today. Um, again, this is the Audio Codes Cloud Education Series. We get together from time to time talk about relevant industry topics. Um, sometimes it becomes a, a stump the chump episode because every once in a while we get emails from people asking us to talk about certain things. And it's always good um, for us to refresh ourselves and we enjoy being able to enable you. So again, I'm Daryl. I'm Mike. Mike. And it's been good talking to you. See you next time. Bye. See you guys. Bye.